How to Fix Any Go-Kart Part 2. Welcome back to the Power of Public YouTube channel. To everybody that's been tuning in, we are repairing a older style go-kart here, and this is how to repair any go-kart. So basically what I wanted to show you guys that anything's possible. If you've got an old cart lying around, get an engine out, get the arc welder, get whatever you've got, all the tools, all the equipment, and just make it happen. And that's basically what's happening right here. If you want to follow along, this project's going to be completed over on our friend's channel, Dan from Cafe Racer Garage. You can click that link in the description below. Go give him a subscribe and a thumbs up. I'm sure he'd really appreciate it. Okay, so without any further distractions, I'm going to get into it. This is the axle keyway and as you can see it's been shared with the rear sprocket now on a traditional go-kart you'd see that the sprocket is all the way over here on the left really close to your bearing cassette but on this one they've moved it outboard because it's a uh, dirt bike engine and the sprockets on the sort of opposite side to what it is on a KZ engine like on a normal go-kart engine we've got the sprocket over here on the inside so we would call that an inboard sprocket this is being a dirt bike engine, it has an outboard sprocket. So they've put this sprocket all the way ahead here. So what we're going to do is we're going to remove this axle. You can see here that we've got pretty thin wall section axle. So what we're going to do is we're going to beef this up with a little sleeve. I'm going to slide that down inside the inside this axle. And then we're going to drill in a new three pin keyway for the for the sprocket carrier and have a separate keyway for the wheel hop. You can see here that the keyway is slightly bent and I think that's because the wheel's stuck over here and then the engine's driving the sprocket and it's trying to twist it all up over here. Uh, this has been chewed out here by having the sprocket so far outboard. So previously the sprocket was outboard like this. So my solution for this problem is we're going to spin it around 180 degrees and pick up this uh, original keyway here in the axle, which is for a traditional sprocket carry on a tag cart. And we could probably pick up the first hole, but I'm going to put this in the milling machine and extend this keyway out a little bit and then just put three holes and a three hole pegged keyway. So in case you're wondering what a three peg keyway is I was talking about, it's this little heavy duty guy here. And uh, yeah, it's just gonna be able to take a bit more torque from the engine without chewing out the axle. So we're gonna stick that in. So you can see here that that is the drive keyway on the sprocket. So that's what transmits the, the power to the axle, so to speak, and it stops the this rear sprocket from spinning on the axle is this little keyway. And if we go over to the cart, you can see here I've marked with Techstar or Nico Pen, depending on where you're from, uh, where we're going to extend the keyway here, make it the flat a little bit longer. Then we're going to drill a couple of new holes for the three pinned pegged key. Just remember, when in doubt, lube. If the axle's a little dry, just spray some RP7 WD-40 on it and it'll help slide it out a bit easier.
Okay, so as you can see, the Power Public axle basher tool is working perfectly here. It's knocked the axle out and it's holding the brake disc and brake disc hub in position. And the screwdriver we use to wedge, wedge it apart slightly so that the axle slid a little bit easier. And also a notable exception or exclusion, as you can see here, is that the axle was so stiff and rusty uh, that we've actually taken the bearing cassettes out as well and you can see them here on the bench they're still attached to the axle and this one's obviously in pretty pretty average condition it's got plenty of rust on it a few scratches it's probably a little bit out of round this end was obviously bent as that's what it's here for it's a bit of a straightening job and then you can see here on our with our texture marks here that we're going to be cutting that keyway in the milling machine and then just drilling ourselves a couple of new holes Okay, so now the axle is clean, it's ready to be straightened. I've also got to make up that boss to slide on the inside for a bit of extra rigidity and then machine the keyway. So now we've got the axle all set up on the milling machine. We got to run in through our Axle straightening jig, and we've got a couple of dial indicators on there so we can check the run out. That's a couple of millimeters, so we're going to tweak that back here with the screw press and just keep checking it out until it's perfect. Okay, so now we've got the finished product. Axle straightened, it's within about 0.1 of a millimeter. So you won't feel that when you're driving. Okay, so now we can uh, break this all down and we're gonna set the lathe up and machine the axle spacer to go inside to give it a bit more rigidity. Then we'll be back over on the milling machine to cut the keyway. Okay, so now that we've gone from the mill over the lathe, we're just gonna turn up that axle spacer. Now this is going to go inside the axle now it's going to add a little bit of rigidity but that's not a major issue for us because this is a little home job and we're not really racing anybody so if the axle is a little stiffer it doesn't matter it's probably just going to resist bending a bit easier and also to give some uh something for the keyway for it to bite into so it stops twisting out under under the load of the engine
So now we've finished turning up the axle stiffener, we're going to insert that into the axle and set up the axle in the mill, cut the new keyway, drill the new holes and put it all back together. So as you can see we've got our axle set up in the milling machine here and we've just made the little flap for the keyway to sit on. We've also drilled the three holes and also too if you do want to chamfer a hole and you're at home uh, and you don't have a countersinking tool we're just using a bigger drill bit. So in this case we had the 7mm holes here so we grabbed a 10mm drill bit and just turned the speed down and countersunk the holes just nicely there. Okay, so you can see that we've got our little pegged keyway and it should just be a, a light tap fit. Now this thing here with the extra bit of reinforcement on the inside of the axle, plus we're going to remember this is where the sprocket was sitting and now we're going to move it 180 degrees so it's more inboard. And that's going to give us a little bit more rigidity as well because we'll be closer to the bearing cassette. Okay, so now that we've done all the machining, it's time to break it down off the mill, take it over the go-kart and do the final assembly. So there you can see the axle stiffener all the way down inside of the axle. So that's going to give the keyway something to bite into. So now we've got the cart all back together. The, the axle's been straightened. We've beefed it up underneath the rear sprocket there. Also too, we've put in a three pegged keyway. So that should give it a little bit more rigidity. So hopefully we don't bend the axle again. If you're liking these videos, please comment below because we can make some more on how to fix any go-kart. This 125 engine might come off in the next couple of weeks. We could show you how to fix the engine mount. If you want to see how to do that, let us know. Just give us a thumbs up. Turn on those notifications. Hit the subscribe button. Smash it. Do whatever you got to do to show us some love. And we'll see you in the next video.